In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to Mass this morning. Welcome if you're participating via the internet. Today the Church remembers Thomas Ken, one-time Bishop of Bath and Wells, about whom we shall hear a little later on. So this Eucharist we should offer for our diocese, for Peter, our departed diocesan bishop, and especially for those who have the responsibility of choosing his successor. So we pray God's blessing on that process, that the right person may be appointed to take us forward. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all blessings flow, by whose providence we are kept, and by whose grace we are directed, help us, through the example of your servant Thomas Ken, faithfully to keep your word, humbly to accept adversity, and steadfastly to worship you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I swear by God's truth, there is no yes and no about what we say to you. The Son of God, the Christ Jesus that we proclaimed among you, I mean Silvanus and Timothy and I, was never yes and no. With him it was always yes. And however many the promises God made, the yes to them is all is in him. That is why it is through him that we answer our men to the praise of God. Remember it is God himself who assures us all, and you, of our standing in Christ, and has anointed us, marking us with his seal and giving us the pledge, the spirit, that we carry in our hearts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your face shine on your servant. Let, Let your, your face, face shine, shine on, on your servant. Your will is wonderful indeed, therefore I obey it. The unfolding of your word gives light and teaches the simple. Let, Let your, your face, face shine on your servant. servant. I open my mouth and I sigh as I learn, yearn for your commands. Turn and show me your mercy, show justice to your friends. Let, Let your, your face, face shine, shine on your, your servant. servant. Let my steps be guided by your promise. Let no evil rule me. Let your face shine on your servant. 
and teach me your decrees. Let, Let your, your face shine, shine on your soul. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, keep awake. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming, but understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who, then, is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has put in charge of his household to give the other servants their allowance of food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find at work when he arrives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down for a moment and we'll discover a bit more about Thomas Ken. Thomas Ken was born in Hertfordshire in 1637 and was reared by his half-sister Anne and her husband, the well-known angler Isaac Walton. Educated at Winchester and Hart Hall, Oxford, he was ordained and became Fellow of New College in 1657 aged 20. Extraordinary. After working in several parishes, which would have been the benefices of which uh, New College Oxford was the patron, because you couldn't live in an Oxbridge College if you were married. So he would have worked in these parishes. He became tutor at Winchester in 1672. It was probably here that he wrote the two hymns for which he is largely remembered. The morning hymn, Awake My Soul, and the evening hymn, Glory to Thee, My God, This Night. In 1679, he went to The Hague as chaplain to Princess Mary, niece of King Charles II of England and wife of the Dutch Prince William of Orange. Ken publicly rebuked William for his treatment of his wife, which may well account for his return to England after only a year. Upon his return, he was made personal chaplain to King Charles. When the king requested that Ken provide lodging for his current mistress, Nell Gwynne, as the chaplain's residence was conveniently close to the palace, Ken sent the king a bold refusal, complaining that he was the royal chaplain and not the royal pimp. Charles admired his honesty and bluntness, and made him Bishop of Bath and Wells in 1685. Some authorities have suggested that when Charles died the same year, he asked for Ken's ministrations on his deathbed. The next king, James II, was a Roman Catholic and caused political turmoil by his heavy-handed attempts to favour Roman Catholics. He issued a decree, the Declaration of Indulgence, which attempted to override the legal restrictions on Catholics. The declaration was required to be read in churches, but seven bishops 
among them Thomas Ken and also Archbishop William Sancroft, Archbishop of Canterbury, refused and were imprisoned in the Tower of London. But James was forced to release the bishops and to flee abroad. Parliament declared the throne vacant and then offered it jointly to the king's daughter Mary and her husband William of Orange. But nine bishops, among them Thomas Ken and some three to four hundred clergy, refused to take the oath to William and Mary on the grounds that their oath to King James was still valid. Known collectively as the non-jurors, they were all deprived of their livings. In his enforced retirement, Ken lived a celibate ascetic life, initially working as a private tutor. A man who repeatedly put principle before personal comfort, Ken refused an offer of reinstatement at Bath and Wells in 1703. He died eight years later. So here is a great and holy priest who had principle. And we pray for our diocese of which he was bishop and for those who will choose his successor. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of William Ken, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, Grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Thomas Ken, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. 
he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice, with praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of John the Evangelist, the beloved disciple, our patron, of Thomas Ken and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is present among us, and so we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, 
but only say the word and I shall be healed. Blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all his property. Let us pray. God, servant of your people, whose servant, God, shepherd of your people, whose servant Thomas Ken revealed the loving service of Christ in his ministry as a pastor of your people, by this Eucharist in which we share, awaken within us the love of Christ and keep us faithful to our Christian calling. Through him who laid down his life for us, but is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.